I'm putting up $5,000 that says I know more than you. So if you're smart enough, fast enough, and if you've got the guts, you can win Ben Stein's money. Healing, I need sexual healing. And right now, I get the feeling that I'm going to put $5,000 of my money in life and give these two totally strange things a chance to take it out of life, but if they dare. Now, why have I done such a foolish thing? Call me crazy. You're crazy! And you have been talking to my wife. Also, call me fairly sure that they don't have a chance against me. Now, before we go any further, I must introduce the Linda Lovelace to my John Holmes, the one and only Jimmy Kimmel. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. The person you hear howling is contestant number one. He's Chuck Abernathy, and Chuck is a theater technician. What does that mean, Chuck? I work backstage on uh, musicals for a uh, civic light opera. Oh, and Very he's good. a big Star Trek fan. Uh, as big as they get. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I never would have guessed Star Trek fan looking at you, Chuck. Yeah, I was yeah. a male model, maybe. I, uh, but I Star, Trek, yeah. Star Trek, no. No, not in your uh, makeup. But well, surprising. I have my own gravitational field. Right. <laughs> Chuck's doing That's the fat jokes funny. before I get to him. <laughs> Credit where it's due, a damn good joke. All right, Chuck, and Carol Brownstein is an administrative assistant who once almost ran over Adam Sandler. What happened? I was at a major Burbank furniture store, and he came walking across the street carrying a huge potted plant. I guess he just wanted to set that thing down somewhere, so he, he couldn't stop. Adam was out buying plants? Yeah, yeah. And uh, contestant number three is Kurt Bodden. He's an actor who also teaches improv. Right. Oh, improv is very hard. Sorry. I, well, improv, you don't have to plan anything. You just do it, right? It's the easiest thing yeah. in the world. You shouldn't even be teaching it. <laughs> people move on. You can't oh. blow your line. All right, That's then. subtle. That's these, subtle. These are the contestants. That's subtle. Contestants, good luck. You're going to need it. Sometimes Jimmy's jokes are a bit subtle and are only appreciated by me, the John Holmes. <laughs> <is Linda Lovelace. laughs> to everyone, please turn your attention to our game board as Jimmy tells us our first five topics. And they are... Matthew Perry's that haven't been in rehab. <laughs> New Delhi, same menu. <laughs> Books by crooks who are friends of Ben. <laughs> Don't hype a cow man. <laughs> and after finding Pops magazines, every day was Palm Sunday. Oh. oh. All right, contestants. Forget you heard all those leering things. In the first round, questions are worth anywhere from $50 to $150 of my money. Chuck, we're going to start with you. Pick a topic. All right, friend. let's have books by crooks who were friends of Ben. $150 question. What is the title of the one-word autobiography by convicted Watergate conspirator G. Gordon Liddy? Chuck. Will. Whoa, fast, wow. fast. You bet, Chuck. You bet. Chuck. Chuck, that means you get first crack at a follow-up question for $50. Fantastic. In 1996, 20 years after his memoir, Blind Ambition, was published, what author claimed he didn't write key portions and hadn't even read the whole book? John Dean. Yes, indeed. Very good. That's a long book. So really well, book. Our next category is Yogi Bernays, and Big Chuck has control of the board. Let's try Yogi Bernays. $150 question. The dried leaves of what fragrant herb give Bernays sauce its distinctive flavor? Kurt. Ill. No, sir. Carol. Basil. No, madam. Chuck. Tarragon. Yes. $50 question, what relative of the onion is often combined with sour cream as a baked potato topping? Chives. Yes, very yeah. good. Chuck <laughs> in the food category, he's trouble. Our next category. Alms for the standard and pours, and uh, Chuck, you get to pick again. Ooh, let's try New Delhi's same menu. Okay. 
Hundred dollar question. This is my knife. <laughs> Hundred dollar question. What is the monetary unit of India? Kurt. The rupee. Yes, the rupee. Very good. Fifty dollar follow up. Fifty dollar follow up. From what country did India gain its independence in 1947? Great Britain. Very good. Very good. And now. Before I lose any more cash to this man from the Civic Light Opera and this other fellow, this improviser, and Carol, you're being very polite, it's time to take a break, and we'll be back to see how much more money these bondits can take away from you right after this. We're back with more of Win My, Ben Stein's Money. Right now, Chuck, the answering machine, is in the lead with $400 of my money. Kurt, by the way, isn't doing bad either. And Jimmy, what is our new category? Our new category is... Hither and Yon Winner. And uh, I believe uh, Kurt had the last correct answer, so he gets the pick first. I'd like to see those Matthew Perrys that haven't been in rehab. $100 question. Commodore Matthew Perry's 1853 expedition caused what Asian country to open trade relations with the West? Chuck. Japan. Japan, indeed. <laughs> what are you so damn happy about? <laughs> $50 follow-up. Famous for his quote, we have met the enemy and they are ours. What was the first name of Matthew's older brother? Sid. <laughs> yeah, no, Sid. I Lee like Carroll? Thomas? No. Steven. No, no, Oliver David? Hazard Perry. Oliver Hazard Perry. Oh. Wow, amazing. One you didn't oh. know. How could we forget him? Our next category is Take Two Diapers and Call Me in the Morning. And uh, Chuck, you have control of it. Okay, let's try Hither and Yon Winner. Hmm, $50 question. With a $7,500 initial investment, what magazine was started in 1967 by 21-year-old San Francisco entrepreneur Yon Winner? Chuck. Rolling Stone. <laughs> Does he get it right if he sings it? <laughs> yes, exactly right. Thank you for allowed to sing. $50 follow-up. $50 follow-up. $50 follow what monthly magazine published by Jan Wenner focuses strictly on entertainment and personalities? People? No, sir. Carol. Us? Yes, exactly, and she gets it right early. Two minutes left in the round. Our next category is that singer has a falsetto. You know what? Sing Carol. I'll go with after finding Pops magazines, every day was Palm Sunday. Hundred dollar question. The tradition of Palm Sunday commemorates Jesus' triumphant entry into what city? Chuck. Jerusalem. Yes. Whoa. $50 follow-up. What Christian festival falls on the seventh Sunday after Easter and celebrates the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles? Um, Lent? No. <sighs> Kurt? Assumption? No. Hey, Carol, <laughs> yawning. Pentecost. Pentecost. That's a big one at my house. Our, our next category is Everybody Loves Raymond. And uh, Chuck, you get to pick again. Let's try that singer has a falsetto, you, falsetto, you know what. $150 question. Famed for her performance of Bel Canto repertoire, what Australian soprano was named Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire? Carol. Kiri T. Kanawa? No. Although I love her, too. Joan Sutherland. $50, now $50 toss-up. What does the Latin term diva literally mean? Kurt. Lady. No, madam. Oh, no, sir, sir. <laughs> Carol. Singer? No, no, madam. I'm getting a little confused here. Obnoxious. Goddess. Goddess. And that is the end of the first round. Congratulations to our Ooh. friend Chuck. He's got $650 of Ben Stein's money. Kurt, you were in second place. $100. Carol, you're the cutest, but you've only managed to take $50 away from me, and that means we have to say goodbye. Oh, oh goodbye. Bye. 
It also means I get to take back this about one good lunch. <laughs> and now when we come back, these two survivors are going to try to get deep into my wallet. And I will defend my money to actually becoming a contestant. Stay tuned, you're going to learn a lot. round begins, shy, retiring Chuck has $650 of my money. Kurt, the improviser, who's going to have to do some fast improvising, has $150, and I have a mere $4,200 remaining of my original $5,000 stake, and I'm going to now defend it by becoming a comic contestant, and you guys are so tough, you need a salute and a double chest pounding. Yeah. Isn't that right, Ben? Sir, yes, sir! And it's also true, the questions in this round have viciously, sadistically, bloodily risen to the range of $200 to $500 of my money. That's it. That's all I'm saying. All right. Whoever has the highest score at the end of this round, whether it be Kurt, the improv teacher, or Chuck, the world's most gigantic man, goes on to play against Ben one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one, -on -one, whatever, for $5,000. Let's check out our topics. They are... Jock in the ballot box. Like Waterloo off a of Duke's back. Go for broke off. Things that are lighter than Dan Quayle's resume. And take off your Bronte, I'll show you my dickens. Man, it's your money, you get to go first. I'll take that like Waterloo off a duke's back. All right, for $200, what was the given name of the Iron Duke of Wellington, the British general who defeated Napoleon I at Waterloo? Ben. Wellesley. Wellesley is correct, yes. Absolutely. All right, our next category. Midnight train to Georgia O'Keeffe. I have ben. a signed letter by Duke of Marlborough. Me too, back. lots of I bet Duke of Marlborough. <laughs> I'll take a uh, mm, midnight train to Georgia O'Keeffe. All right, for $400, what world-famous photographer and art exhibitor married Georgia O'Keeffe in 1924? Ben? Steichen. No. Kurt? <coughs> Stiglitz? Yes, that's oh. absolutely right. <laughs> Good for you. You say Steichen, he says Stieglitz. Our next category... The Joy Duck Club. And, uh, <laughs> Kurt, you get the pick. Uh, I'd like Jacques in the Bennett books. Please. All right, for $200 of Ben's money, what Jacques had an itch to become the French president and did so in 1995? Ben? Chirac. Chirac is what? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know what they need a president for over there. Our next category, getting it in the endoscope. <laughs> ben? I'll try getting it in the endoscope. Well, why not? Why not? Uh, for $200, what term describes surgery performed on a joint, such as a knee or shoulder, using the instrument known as an endoscope? Ben. Arthroscopic. Arthroscopic is absolutely right. Ben knows that from his college football days. You still with us over there, Chuck? Our next category is the road scholar less traveled than Ben. Hmm, I'll try that. All right, for $200, name the Rhodes Scholar, songwriter, singer, and actor who wrote Me and Bobby McGee. Ben. Christofferson. Yes, that's right. No way that dirtbag's really a Rhodes Scholar, you know? We have less than one minute left in the round. Get cracking, boys. It's real close. Our next category is anything you can do, CAD can do better. And uh, Ben, you get to choose. Uh, I'll try... Uh... Anything you can do, CAD CAM can do better. All right, for $200, in the computer acronym CAD CAM, what does CAD stand for? Ben? Computer Automated Design. No. Kurt? Computer Aided Design. Computer Aided Design. Yay, right. right. Very good. Very good. Kurt Very jumps good. out in the lead. Very Our next good. category, another Englishman who stayed in the closet, and uh, <laughs> Kurt gets to choose. Joy Duck Club, please. All right, for $400, what particular form of learning causes newly hatched ducklings to follow and subsequently prefer the first moving object they see? Ben? Imprinting. Imprinting is right, yes. And that sound means the round is over. Congratulations to Kurt. You've got $750 of Ben's size money. 
shocking defeat of Chuck, who I don't think would have fit in the isolation Chuck. booth anyway, but... <laughs> Chuck, let me just say something. Wait a minute, everyone oh, be quiet. Uh, this guy is so goddamn close. smart, it's insane. <laughs> This is, a, this is a game very largely of luck of the questions that come up. He could easily have, I think, I would just say, beaten me in every single one of the oh. questions come up differently. He's been a hell of a competitor. Oh, that's wonderful. It's really nice oh, to have had you on the game. So, your history, but you've been a very interesting and compelling part of history. Since you're leaving, I get to have your money added back to my total. Oh. And now we've reached the final financial crush. You, Kurt. Maybe within moments of winning all five thousand dollars of my money. That is, if you're smarter, quicker, and luckier than I am. Stay in your seats. You don't have to stay in your seat. You can stay here. But we'll be right back. Congratulations. Now it's down to just thin you against not quite as thin me. So far, you've taken $750 away from me, and that is yours to keep no matter what happens. The IRS will be notified, the Franchise Tax Board, but they won't care. They don't care if you don't pay your taxes. But now you have a chance, albeit a small one, to walk out of here in those cool black shoes with all $5,000 of my cash. And all you have to do is beat me in what we call the best of ten test of knowledge. Could you explain to the group, please, Jimmy? Oh, uh, sure. You make all those mean jokes about Chuck, and now I'm supposed to explain it to the group? I liked Chuck, and I said very nice things oh, about him, which right. were sincerely mean. Made those mean jokes. Now, I'm yeah. going to ask Ben and Kurt the same ten questions. Kurt, if you can answer more of them than Ben can, his $5,000 becomes yours. You can go first or second. I'd like to go first. All right, to the booth, gentlemen. <laughs> Kurt is going to go first. All right. Close that baby up. Ben is being locked away safely in his soundproof isolation booth. Uh, Kurt, since Ben can't hear me, smoke him like a sausage, all right? <laughs> Are you ready? 60 seconds, 10 questions. Let's begin. What U.S. state is known as the Show Me State? Uh, Missouri. Yes. What Democratic senator presided over the Clarence Thomas hearings? Uh, Biden. Yes. What is the scientific name for common table sugar? Uh... Sucrose. Yes. What two European countries sided with Franco during the Spanish Civil War? Italy and Germany. Yes. Who co-wrote the song Crocodile Rock with Elton John? Bernie Taupin. Yes. What Spanish religious leader founded the Jesuits? Oh, uh, uh, oh, pass. I don't know. In 1781, what German philosopher is known for his critique of pure reason? Kant. Yes. What regal item is depicted on the flag of Liechtenstein? A crown. Yes. What type of men's formal attire, which debuted in 1886, is named for a town in New York? Tuxedo. Yes. How many sides does a dodecahedron have? Twelve. Did he get it in? Yes, he did. Nine. That is tremendous. Oh, right. That was good work, sir. Nine. Okay. Well, Nine. I am uh, sad about that. I don't know what else to say. Buckle in, buddy. No. You got an ass whooping on the way. Oh, All right. Sixty seconds. Ten questions. Let's begin. What U.S. state is known as the Show Me State? Uh, Missouri. What Democratic senator presided over the Clarence Thomas hearings? Ooh, um, Irvin. No. What is the scientific name for common table sugar? Uh, N N A C L. No. Sodium chloride. And now it's all gravy. What two European Wait, countries <laughs> sided with Franco during the Spanish Civil War? Germany and Italy. Yes. Who co-wrote the song Crocodile Rock with Elton John? Who? Uh, Taupin. Yes. What Spanish religious leader founded the Jesuits? Um, Savonarola. No. In 1781, what German philosopher is known for his critique of pure reason? Kant. Yes. What regal item is depicted on the flag of Liechtenstein? Eagle. No, what type of men's formal attire, which debuted in 1886, is named for a town in New York? Tuxedo. Yes. How many sides does a dodecahedron have? Oh, God, 14. Y no, that is not right. <clears throat> wow. And it didn't matter anymore. No, it didn't, really. Come on out of the booth, man. <laughs> Slink on out of the booth. Come on out of the booth. Thank you.
totally smoked my ass. This is incredible. Thank the money. I found your superior knowledge. And at last, I'm humble. Get out of here. You've done enough damage for a lifetime. But you have proved that it can be done. And therefore, I challenge all of you out there to write, call, or email to futility.com in the hope, infinitesimal as it might be, that on some planet, on some distant day, you, like this thin young man, might someday win Ben, ben, ben Stein's, Stein's money. money.